Okay, welcome back. This is lesson number six. We're going to talk a little bit more specifically about patient interactions. Now, in previous lessons, we talked about uh, patient advocacy and being an ambassador to the office and the dentist. Now, we're going to talk about some patient interaction specifics. So, let's talk first about what the purpose of communication is. Uh, obviously, communication is to connect individuals with uh, data, with knowledge, with information. Um, it's important that we learn to communicate effectively, efficiently, appropriately um, as a dental team. Otherwise, it's very difficult to accomplish anything with regard to serving people. So communication needs to be clear, concise, and effective. Um, if it's not clear, if it's not compressed so that it's useful, and if it's not effective, then what good is it? So we need to make sure that we're communicating appropriately. Um, let's talk about these two words, demeanor and rapport. So as a dental assistant, as anybody in the dental office, a uh, member of the dental team, uh, it's, it's critical that we have appropriate demeanor. And that is how we maintain ourselves, our comportment, if you will. Um, it's our outward behavior or bearing, which is visible to other individuals. Now what is rapport? Excuse me, rapport is a close and harmonious relationship in which the people or groups concerned understand each other's feelings or ideas and communicate well. This is what we want with the dental office team is that rapport. But it's important that we have a solid demeanor among the individuals so that the rapport can be developed with the team. So before we really dig into patient discussions, we want to talk about rapport and demeanor um, so that we can work on uh, having an efficient team so we can appropriately communicate. Let's dig into a little bit about greeting the patient. So I've had a lot of dental assistants that I've worked with over the years. Some were fantastic, others were not so fantastic. Um, you can tell a lot by uh, about a dental assistant or about a doctor, about anybody for that matter, by how they greet a perfect stranger, um, especially someone who potentially will be paying their salary. So greeting the patient needs to be very, very professional, first and foremost, uh, pleasant uh, and purposeful. Um, and as we said before in a previous lesson, lesson um, when you're greeting that patient, you're first serving as an ambassador to the office. So that demeanor becomes really, really critical. How do you look? Are your scrubs nice if you're wearing scrubs? Um, are you dressed appropriately? How's your hair? Um, have you made sure that your teeth are brushed? Heaven forbid at a dental office you have a dental assistant who's got either bad breath or teeth that aren't clean. Um, and how do you carry yourself? Now we don't expect everyone to be the most wonderful statesman or stateswoman, um, but it's important that uh, that composure, that comportment, that demeanor be there uh, so that you can accurately and, and appropriately rather uh, represent the dental office. So escorting the patient back is really critical. Um, you know, normally the first time we meet a patient, um, we should always address them by their last name, uh, Mrs. Smith, rather than Mary. Um, now, as you're escorting them back, certainly you can have a, a discussion with them. Are you comfortable with me calling you Mary? Is that okay? But generally, generally, um, if the dental assistant is younger than the patient they're calling back, um, they should call them by their last name. Now, that doesn't always apply. Um, that's just kind of across the board, a relatively accepted convention across the board. But again, it's, it's not crucial, it's not critical, but it is important that we maintain respect. Um, so someone who's older usually should be addressed by Mr. or Mrs. and their last name until they give you explicit permission to use their first name. All right, so we want to use the last name until permission is granted, um, an introduction and a purpose. Hi, I'm so-and-so. I'm here to take you back, or I'm here to get your appointment started, or I'm here to bring you um, to so-and-so who's going to do whatever. Um, we're going to go back to room number three. Um, make sure you get them settled in and comfortable. Um, and here's one of my pet peeves. That headrest needs to be adjusted to the patient. You can see here, this headrest is adjustable. This particular model of chair, this knob adjusts. Um, you screw it counterclockwise and then that whole headrest will move forward and backward to accommodate the back of the patient. And we want that headrest at the back of the patient's neck right here. You don't want it up here, you don't want it back here on some of us bigger guys. Um, you want it to be appropriately positioned so that it's comfortable when they lean back. 
So make sure that it's adjusted. Now for a lot of people you won't have to adjust it, but for a lot you will. So let's make sure it's adjusted and comfortable. All right, so when the doctor is in the room, we always want to be deferential and respectful. Um, the doctor is always, always right, even when he or she is wrong. And there's a reason for that. I'll talk about that in a second. Never correct the doctor directly. Um, I recommend developing a signal or a key word you can say to the doctor to get them to exit the room and have a discussion privately. Um, never use I don't know or we don't have that uh, when there's a patient in the room. Um, be complimentary and confirmatory. Be a good advocate and a bastard. And always, 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 always be prepared. Be more prepared than you think you need to be. So let's talk about this why the doctor is always right even when we're not. Now I'm not saying that if the doctor does something wrong that's okay or you need to let it go. What I'm saying is um, except in very limited circumstances as a dental assistant it's critical that the doctors maintain their the appropriate um, status with the patient. Now if there's something wrong that's happening that needs to stop um, but there's a, a time and a place to address that. So we, do, we don't want to demean um, the doctor. We don't want to say something that the doctor could potentially um, take as offensive. Now l let me uh, let me take a step back and kind of explain that to you a little bit. So if for instance a doctor is preparing a tooth for a crown or a filling and you as a dental assistant may have a lot of experience, maybe even more experience than the doctor, which happens all the time, um, feel like there may be some tooth decay left in the tooth when the doctor is done drilling and ready to start either the filling or the crown. Um, how would you address that? And that's the situation we're talking about. Would you say, oh, there's still decay in that tooth, doctor? Or, I don't think you did a very good job. <laughs> or would you say something like, what is that on the distal surface of, of the tooth? Can you help me to understand that? Now, this isn't meant to be a, a discussion about what is a cavity and what is not. Ultimately, that falls on the licensee that's you know, being regulated by the board. Um, and that's something that we spend years in dental school um, learning to diagnose and remove. Um, but if there's an issue with quality of care, that discussion should not be having, had in front of the patient. But it is important that you as a dental assistant, if you notice problems, bring it up to the doctor. Um, I would hope that any doctor you work for would have the fortitude to be willing to accept criticism when it's constructive. So this is when the doctor's out of the room. Let me go back. This is when the doctor's in the room. Notice the list is exactly the same. <laughs> I did that on purpose. So when the doctor's in the room and out of the room, um, you should be the same person. Your demeanor and comportment should be identical. Um, regardless of whether or not the doctor's in the room with you. Um, let's dig into this be prepared piece a little bit. You'll, you'll find as you start dental assisting, a chair side dental assisting, that there are oftentimes things that are used up um, uh, more than others, like burrs, um, a specific hand piece may wear out. Um, a lot of times it's the burrs, um, or cotton rolls are not put out, or cotton pliers are not put on the right side, or whatever. Um, you want to make sure you learn these things and then pay special attention to them because like a day, day like today, um, the doctor, other doctor and I in the office did, between the two of us, eight crowns. Um, that's a lot of crowns. And I, I have no problem if something is not there allowing the dental assistant to run back to the office and grab it. But if it happens eight times in a row, it gets a little annoying. You know, and even though I'm pretty laid back guy, it might lead to some frustration. So be prepared. Once or twice isn't a big deal, but if it's eight times in a day or once every single day for a month, this starts to drive us bonkers. And um, hopefully, again, as a doctor, I'll have the moral, moral fortitude to pull you aside and say, you know, uh, Cassie, this uh, I, I've noticed repeatedly that you continue to not have things set up. Um, is there something I can help you with to help you get set up beforehand. Do you know what it is that we need? We want to have set up? Um, hopefully I'll be able to say something like that to you. So another important thing that you as a dental assistant with regard to patient interactions 
uh, are entitled and required to do in many uh, circumstances is prepare the patient for what's going to happen after the appointment. Um, this is something I think that don't ha doesn't happen as well as ideally it should in every situation. Prepare the patient for what to expect afterwards. Uh, be honest about the potential for post-operative pain. Be honest. Um, oh, it's not going to hurt at all. Yeah, that's a lie. You're going to have some pain. Um, we're going to help you manage it with painkillers and, and antibiotics. But you will have some pain. We expect that it's going to last a few days, maybe as long as a couple of weeks. But it should not be really intense. We hope that it's not. If it is, please let me know. Um, be honest and reasonable. Um, provide adequate instructions. A lot of times there's a printout that goes with this. Um, assure the patient that they're not a special snowflake. This happens to almost everybody. You're not the only one. Um, ensure that appropriate medications are given after the appointment. Um, and assist in scheduling follow-up appointments. This is something that's really, really, really critical. Help the patient know what their next step is. For many patients, the next step is a six-month recall appointment from their last six-month recall appointment. For many patients, they have really complicated treatment plans. For patients who have the need for periodontal treatment, the next step is um, either a three-month recall, a four-month recall, periodontal maintenance um, included, um, or a referral to a periodontal uh, specialist, a periodontist. So it's critical that this next step be managed appropriately by the dental assistant. Checking the patient out. We want to do what's called a trust transfer to the front office team. Hi, uh, Jordan. This is Mrs. Smith. She was here for a crown. We went in and completed that for her. Everything went just great. I talked with her about post-operative issues and, and told her to call the office if she has any problems. Um, her next appointment should be for the filling on tooth number 12. We'd like to get her in as soon as possible to prevent this tooth from becoming a big problem and maybe needing a crown in the near future. So I'll hand this chart off to you and uh, allow you to go ahead and schedule her. Does that sound okay? Basically what we're doing is we're having a brief discussion, a scripted discussion in front of the patient so the patient realizes that number one, I know who they are, what we did, and number two, now the person who I just discussed that with knows what's going on. That makes it a lot easier for the patient. really elevates the level of trust. That's why it's called a trust transfer. Uh, make sure that the patient is taken care of. And remember your two things. You're an advocate for the patient, and that advocate advocacy means you're going to help them move to the next level of their treatment, the next step, whether it's a recall appointment for a cleaning or whether it's a root canal or a crown or an implant or a bridge, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, always remember that you're also an ambassador for the office. Maintain your composure, your comportment. Don't get too silly. Sometimes we get really friendly with our patients, which is great, um, but there's a line. You don't want to cross that line and become uh, too buddy-buddy, if you know what I mean. So what do we do when things go wrong? This is a really critical thing to discuss. What happens when you have a, a root canal like this on the upper left um, that I did? Um, what, what do you say when things go terribly wrong? Uh, after the doctor leaves the room and the patient says, so how does that root canal look? Um, <laughs> you know, what do you say? What do you do? Um, it's important to be prepared for these situations before they happen. So. What I would say is if the doctor had not seen this x-ray, this one here on the upper left yet, I would say something like, well, let me go get the doctor and have him uh, tell you how it looks. Just totally defer to the doctor. I would let them have that discussion. Um, now this, this is a, a patient that came in, had a little fracture. Um, I, I, we we'll should talk about this in the later, uh, a later lesson. Had a little fracture, an inlay was placed, should have been a crown, and that tooth ended up needing to be extracted. Here's a root canal that uh, the uh, filler doesn't quite doesn't quite go down the canal, and here's a tooth obviously that's uh, having a problem. So we want to prepare for what these discussions need to be. If something's go wrong, if something goes wrong, obviously number one, call 911 if it's life threatening, or if there's any doubt, call 911. Better better to have a well trained team um, to deal with an inner. Uh, potential crashing patient than to try to manage it or to miss an opportunity to save a life. Um, if there's a procedural problem, like I mentioned before, avoid any comments that are negative in any way. If it's outcome related, defer to and refer to the doctor for advice and discussion. Always maintain composure and comportment, avoiding deprecating language. Don't talk down about yourself, your office, or the dentist. Um, assure the patient, assuage their concerns, assist to the desired outcome. 
The most and most untoward outcomes can be foreseen and forewarned of by the, uh, to the patient so that they can be prepared for the, the possible challenges. Okay, so why is it so important to avoid deprecating or disrespective comments, disrespectful comments while treating patients? What do you think? Why should you avoid saying, I don't know, or we don't have that in front of your patients? And what is the dental assistant's motto? It's also the scout motto. Thank you for watching this lesson six. I will see you in lesson number seven.